art should be shared. Uh, and I'm going to focus on this subject through my toolbox, being an artist. Uh, the subject of identity is something I think all of the artists are indulged with. Uh, discovering, understanding, exploring, experimenting, all the layers, uh, and all the layers which are constantly evolving as well. So the immense complexity within us that's what I've been able to discover within my field, which is my toolbox, which is art. And working with that, I, I kind of realized having that toolbox as well made me realize that, first of all, I live in a constructive world. Every pattern, everything is man-made, constructed. Therefore, we can also change these patterns. So it is within our power to create new things. But also an absence of several voices, a diversity within storytelling. There weren't so many diverse stories being told within my field of art through my tools. And that absence, I witnessed that throughout my studies and also throughout my work. And I've been beca I became very much interested that this toolbox is an amazing space, an amazing space which is allowing me to explore, to rethink, to react, and kind of a neutral place where things can be reborn as well. And how come there isn't a diversity within that space, that there are certain groups who are left outside? Which are the stories which are not being told? So I became very much interested in that. Having indulged in myself, working with I for a lot of, for a long period, I also kind of, it wasn't enough. My focus now was towards the receiver, but also the doers, who's telling the story and which stories are being told. And the awareness of this constructed world, I also wanted to share that. Being an artist, I want to communicate, of course not only through my work, but also through the method and sharing this space, this discovery, that this is an amazing space to be in and an amazing space to be different in a different way in because I know certain layers of my identity are more visible, more questioned, more underlined, and therefore they're highlighted within my work as well. Have I chosen that? Have I not chosen that? I don't know. That's a confusion. Some context underline a few certain uh, layers of my identity. So I became interested in that, but also sharing this experience because there is immense lack. Which are the groups which are not being heard? Which are the unheard voices? Which are not included? And throughout my work, I've been working with various kind of product, projects with groups kind of transferring this information, my own story, actually being born in another country, coming here, transferred here, living here, and so on and so forth. I, I know I'm very much aware I can be an inspiration. And which are the unheard voices? So I became very much interested in engaging those unheard voices, so-called non-professionals, into the act, into co collective creativity, to see, can art be more democratic? who are supposed to be part of it, and who is not. And now I see that it's not running the way I want it to. <laughs> Anyhow, it's a quick film of one of the processes. And I've been lucky to meet people with similar ideas uh, and aspirations of, for a change. And having my toolbox, I wanted to share now. Coming from a background where sharing is kind of fed to you. Because when you have enough, you share your food, you share your love, you share your home, you share everything. So it became a very natural thing as well to step forward. And it, I became interested in these groups, but also through my tools, of course, involve a non-professional into the creative activity and make them aware of the space, which is an amazing space where you can imagine. But also where, where should these stories be applied? of course, in the common public spaces, which are open 
and available and accessible to everyone, which are owned by us all. So I've been engaged in, in several projects where we're working with huge groups of numbers of people involved in a creating process uh, in Sweden and in Stockholm, which is my home city, because I've seen the divisions there. I've seen, I've lived here all my life. I came here as seven years old. I've seen the changes and the gap is increasing. And working on a wall is quite symbolic as well because with walls we divide, we protect, we prevent from actually seeing. So the purpose is to add windows within these walls, to see beyond. And this wall is in Husby. It's a 60 meter long Stockholm's, I can say Sweden's largest collectively made mural painting. Over 260 people were involved into the process of creating it, from eight years to 65 years old, where I think the impact was an immense, because I felt how, how the information of what they were doing was transferred from one participant to another, and the information spread. There was someone's mother, someone's sister, someone's brother who had been involved or who knew. So the gap between art activity and understanding of it is reduced a bit. It's not that far away. So the impact is multiplied, is maximized. There's several readings, there's several understandings, questions, answers, possibilities, potentials as well. So involving larger groups because I'm too eager to see a change within my own lifetime. I can't stand working with my own stuff, I need to do something more, and with my toolbox, of course. So that's my source of engagement. And we all have our toolboxes. And I'm not doing it because I'm such a kind person, a great human being. I'm doing it because I want to live, I want to grow, I want to raise my kids in a society where everyone has an equal right to imagine, create, pursue a life they want to live and reduce the differences and the divisions among us because it will increase, we will move, we will shift, we will meet. We don't have a choice. So I'm urging to all of you, you all are carrying your own toolboxes. Keep them alive and share them. Thank you.